it's not enough to pick our tomatoes into a simple bowl anymore. We need to use these crates or whatever they are called in English. We have so many <laughs> tomatoes, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And we love it, I am not complaining at all. But we have only 39 plants. <laughs> so guys, if you have 39 plants, that's a lot of tomatoes. The harvest is guaranteed to be big. <laughs> so yay, that's cool. There are no problems with them. We don't have to water them or anything. They just grow here on their own. Tomatoes have deep roots and it seems like they don't need us. They just keep growing and growing. The only problem is, look, some of them are not pretty. It's the bottom part. I will show you some uglier ones. Look, yes, here for example. From what we read, this means that there is not enough calcium in the soil here, so we would need to add that, so maybe next year. Tommy is smiling. I don't know, did I say it wrong? Well, calcium didn't sound very English. Calcium <laughs> or something, you know, the element, the white one. So you guys would probably uh, tell us that we should use eggshells. Oh my god, the sun is shining now. And the tomatoes are shining now in the sunshine. So eggshells would be nice, but we would need so many eggs for this. So we will figure it out later, how to add more calcium into the soil. But otherwise, the harvest has been great. And yay, I love it. It looks like we don't need to add calcium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you have a lot of plants, even when one third is ugly, the remaining two thirds are still more than enough. <laughs> it's time to harvest our potatoes. We have here a few of the earlier kind. And you can see they're already done. We oh. can't see almost anything, so that's why we know they are almost done. <laughs> yeah. So I will try to see if there are any potatoes inside. So far I don't see any. But hopefully we will see them soon. Oh, look! Yay! You can feast tonight. <laughs> there are some potatoes, but they're not very big and there are not many of them either. I think we planted like five to seven potatoes here only. It was just for fun because we ran out of space on the main spot in the back. So there are not many here, but we are hoping we will find more uh, in the hay where we planted a later variety. All we harvested from this one small garden bed. I think Peter already harvested here once some potatoes as well for one dinner. Yeah. This will be maybe for one or two more dinners, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, this could have been better, but oh well. And this is our main spot with potatoes. We are all curious to see if it's a success because this year for the first time we planted the potatoes here in hay or old grass clippings. So let's take a look. We will start here. This plant looks dead. You always wait for the plants to die off. So some of them are still green and kind of growing. So we will just do a few of them but how should i do it just open the hay okay oh my god look <laughs> so big okay so just just like that yeah just dig under the dead plants uh -huh. 
Okay, there is one small. <laughs> Oh, wow, 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 something is here again. Okay. And they are clean. Yeah. Not dirty because, wow. Oh my god, look. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so far it looks great. And it's still wet. It's been so dry lately, a lot of days, many days, very hot temperatures and very dry. And there is still moisture in the hay, I can feel it. That's the adventure of hay. We have, for example, zucchini over there in hay and we never water them, ever. Yeah, so that's cool. And now we have potatoes, yay! Wow, <laughs> it's like finding eggs or something. Yeah, it looks so rich. So I assume to have a lot of potatoes you need light soil. And our soil is very heavy mm -hmm. and that's why they're usually small. But in the hay they don't have any kind of resistance to grow. Mm -hmm. So that looks amazing. I think we will stick to this method. <laughs> we will absolutely stick to this method because wow, I love it. There are some tiny ones as well, but yeah, but we'll so many throw them away. So many big ones. And the hay also transforms the soil underneath. It's suddenly so mm -hmm. it's like compost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's clearly not just a coincidence. There are a lot of huge ones. Yeah. So we will feast on potatoes all winter, probably. Yay! It looks like. I love to hear that. This is a later variety. We planted it for the first time last year and they lasted really long. So long, in fact, that we didn't have to buy any potatoes all year. And we planted our own potatoes that we harvested last year, this year. So we didn't even buy the like certified uh, plantable potatoes, but just the regular ones that we harvested. So we got these completely for free and we are sustainable, self-sufficient, yeah. at least with potatoes, <laughs> yeah. which is really cool. We are potato rich. I'm really happy that it worked here in hay or old grass clippings. And it was really easy to plant them as well, right? Easier. Because you just put them in the, in the hay, cover them in the hay, and then you don't take care of them all year long. Except I had to pick the beetles, but that was it. Yeah, yeah, we always have to fight with the potato beetles. That's one struggle here, but otherwise they grow well and <laughs> the harvest is so big. Here we are on the next day. Yesterday we didn't have time to show you. We store the potatoes here, outside, just for two to three days and they will dry off, their skin will get thicker. I think curing is the word, hopefully. But we can't uh, keep them here for too long because when they are outside on light, they could get green quite fast, so normally they should be stored in the dark. So just for a few days and then we will put them here in our cellar. Here we have the small cellar. We are not going there. It's just a small Ooh. one. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> and it's dark there and cold all and humid. year long and humid, yes. That's what potatoes like, so it's a great place for storing potatoes. So we just started harvesting the potatoes, this is just a small sample and we are still curious to see how much we will get overall from the hay planted potatoes, but so far it's looking so promising. The fruits or whatever the potatoes are, are so big and we love it, yay! I have been picking plums a lot recently. This is just a small batch because I'm going to make a plum pie out of these ones. 
so I'm looking forward to that. It should be similar to the pie that I made of sour cherries, the cherry pie, in the past. So hopefully it will work out. Wish me luck and I will just show you the final product, if it's a success. And the pie is baked. It looks amazing. I really like it. We will taste it later and I'm really happy with the result. Ta -da! <laughs> so good, the plums are amazing. What is this for a beauty? I can't believe it. Wow, so pretty, so strong. Rainbows can be amazing and this one is very amazing. <sighs> wow, such a beauty. I just had to jump under such a beautiful rainbow. Amazing. It's so strong. Yeah, very, very pretty. <laughs> For the first time we have quite a lot of hazelnuts I've been picking. I mean quite a lot for us because this is the first season when there is a pickable amount. I would call it a pickable amount and a lot of them are getting ripe. I don't know if you can see something like here for example. Uh, not all of them are ripe yet but some of them are falling on the ground, so that's cool. We'll see how much we will have over time. It's so windy and unpleasant <laughs> and very hot. But yeah, I'm really happy about all the hazelnuts. So this is the biggest one. Here is another one right next to Tommy. Here another one, here another one. Here another one and here another one and we have more all over the property as part of the natural hedge. So in the future there will be a lot of hazelnuts. In the end I picked quite a nice amount of the hazelnuts and I was mainly picking those ones that fell. So I was picking of the ground and they come gradually so there is still more on the main shrub and we have different varieties so some of them are you know these big fruited or i don't know how to call them the nuts will be bigger than normal ones we will shell them later in autumn they can be like this they need to be like this we will let them get more ripe or drier, I don't know. If you show them now, they taste kinda very fresh, very juicy, sweet, and it's different. If we did it now, they wouldn't last for storing very long, so better to let them be for some time, and then when we have time, when the days are colder and everything, we will shell them. It's been unusually hot and uh, dry all summer and now we are already in September and we can see that especially plum trees seem to be struggling or 
you know, they are taking precautions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of uh, leaves uh, have fallen off already, but also the plums have fallen off. We've been picking some and we uh, dehydrated a nice amount that should last us at least a year, I think. So that's great. But then suddenly the rest of the plums disappeared. Some are on the ground, maybe some were eaten by birds as well. I'm not sure because there are not that many on the ground, but they are gone from the trees. So we are done with picking them. Yeah. And so. that happened on all the trees. Yeah. Yeah. All the plums are gone. Uh, so we thought we would have a huge amounts, but we just have nice amounts, but that's still obviously nice. Yeah. So the second half of the summer was the driest. At the beginning, it looked quite nice. There were thunderstorms and we were like, okay, this year it's not that dry. But then, of course, it came <laughs> and still it's very, it's unusually warm for this time. Warm. It's not warm anymore. Hmm. The sun isn't strong in September. We kept the water in the barrel for about a month before we exchanged it. Mm -hmm. We exchanged it like last week, something like that. Mm -hmm. So now it's quite fresh. Yeah, it was kind of, I don't know how to describe it, old. It wasn't dirty, it uh, didn't have any algae in mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it was just, it looked used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe like dirt, you know, like sweat from us and stuff like that. Yeah, probably. The cover, the lid really helps mm -hmm. because it's dark inside of the barrel. So there is no growth of algae or anything green. Yeah, we confirmed at least for ourselves that we can keep it uh, natural, that we don't need to use any chemicals. Mm -hmm. It looked fine. It didn't have any effect on our skin or anything like that. So yeah, I guess it wasn't unhealthy. Yeah, but when the days are really hot, the water gets kind of like, you know, you can see and feel that it's not right anymore. So mm -hmm. then it's the time to change it. And how we did it, we just used buckets and we watered the whole yard and everything with the water so nothing went to waste and then we just took the barrel out of the like it's just partially in the ground so we just took it and cleaned it with the garden hose and i cleaned it thoroughly and then we put it back and just uh, filled it with new water yeah from our well yeah so that's how it's done <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a simple refreshment here, nothing too advanced, just a normal barrel. Yeah, and we can feel that now in September, even though it's very warm still, the sun is not strong anymore. So with the same temperature, the water is colder than it was in July mm -hmm. when we started with this barrel. So the season this year was very short, but next year we will have it, we will start using it much sooner. I'm sure that from May, June, latest, it will be usable. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Exactly. I'm looking forward to that as well. It's a nice addition here. And especially during summer, it's great that we can just jump in and cool off. Yeah. It's actually great for productivity because, you know, when you work, you start sweating and you don't want to work anymore, but you can just quickly jump into the water and you can go and continue working in the garden. Yay, so it's very efficient. <laughs> Guys, I'm so excited. Look, two new mushrooms appeared here. These are slippery jacks, so I'm going to harvest them. But I wanted to say that it's not easy to grow mushrooms in your garden. They just appear on their own, so you have to be lucky. And we are really lucky with this spot. It's here in this 
shaded corner and it's a bit wetter because when it's raining water is dripping from the roof and I was cleaning the barrel for our refreshment here at this spot so there was a lot of water flowing here otherwise the weather has been very dry but thanks to the water these ones appeared and it's really established here because we've been harvesting these slippery jacks at this spot since last year they always appear when it's wetter so that's amazing i am so happy about that yay <music> This year we have more potatoes than ever. Yeah. <laughs> and last year we didn't manage to eat all of them because it was too much for us. So this year it will be interesting. So this will last us 100% until the next year's harvest, right? Yeah. Wow. I'm so happy. And it was like discovering treasures when like Tommy was uncovering the hay and there they were so many big potatoes they are so yeah. big many of them and wow this is a total success yeah better than i expected <laughs> yeah yeah wow this exceeded our expectations and it's totally amazing i am so excited to have all the potato meals all year long okay. <laughs> yay and it was very easy, so we will do the same thing next year and uh, plant all our potatoes in hay. Exactly. This method, we are amazed and we will definitely repeat this because it was very easy to pick them, yeah. to take them from the hay. They are quite clean and they grow so well in the hay. Mm -hmm. There is moisture there, even though it's very dry right now, for example, it hasn't rained for two weeks yeah. and it's so hot so everything is totally dry but there was still moisture in the hay and the potatoes were growing well so yeah this method is proven now in our household and it's great mm -hmm. 